Thank you. Um, I want to say how proud I am of the laity and the clergy of this Baltimore Washington conference. You have demonstrated nothing short of extraordinary response to an unprecedented time. You have met challenge with creativity, obstacles with determination, disappointments with resilience and frustration with optimism. You truly have lived in to the sermon that was preached on Easter. You have brought faith greater than your fear. You've been faithful. Thank you. I pray that you'll continue to be as collaborative and inclusive after this season as we've seen you be during this season. There are some old practices that we want to leave in the tomb of COVID-19 and some new ways of being that we want to emerge with us. Let us be as strategic in that regard as we have been before. Beloved, during this quadrennium, we have used Ephesians 4 verses 1 through 16 as our guiding scripture. We've drawn from these passages as we've engaged in holy conferencing, as we've developed our strategic foci and ordered our lives together in mission and in ministry. The overarching message inherent in these verses also grounds our protocol and our processes for gathering together again as the beloved community during the midst of this pandemic. This scripture reminds us that we are one as the body of Christ and yet within that oneness there is diversity. The way that we're able to remain in the unity and the bond of peace is that we privilege others above ourselves, care for one another with acts of love. We resist any immaturity that tears at the fabric of our unity and succumbs to selfish motivations. We bear with one another in love as we all strive towards the same end, which is being fully mature in Christ and robust in love. As your Episcopal servant, my priority in this pandemic has been and will continue to be lives above every other consideration. We will err on the side of safety rather than expediency, and we will remember that this is a fluid situation requiring attentive and adaptive responses. In the light of the best information available from trusted medical and infectious disease personnel, one of whom is on this panel, and the collective discernment of the stakeholders of this conference who weighed in on this matter, I recommend that all local churches continue to conduct virtual worship and refrain from in-person gatherings until it is clearly safe to do so again. We are really safer at home. And I know many of you are asking questions about uh, how does this apply to gathering outside and gathering in open air worship spaces, and we will address that. I know that we yearn once again to comfort one another, enjoy the fellowship of the body and the blessing of in-person worship. And yet we know that the risk to human life is still high. Also, as our Ephesian text reminds us, we must pour ourselves out in acts of love for one another, which includes the sacrifice of refraining from gathering prematurely. There are many within our congregations who are in the highest risk categories. And I want us to remember that that isn't just about pre-existing conditions. The statistics have borne out that persons of color represent one uh, percentage in our population but are overwhelmingly a higher percentage of those who have, who have uh, been infected with the COVID virus, but who also have succumbed to it at a, an alarming rate. We need to think about that as our houses of worship begin to open themselves up again for us to gather. Our personal desires must be secondary to caring for the most vulnerable among us. The information that you're going to uh, receive this evening uh, has been the best wisdom that we could bring to bear on the reopening of buildings and conducting in-person gatherings, again, as it is safe to do so. Bear in mind that these reopenings will take place in phases. Also, please understand that this will not be a linear trajectory. We will move into phase two, and then we may have to go back to phase one. We may be well into phase three, and then something happens in one of our communities that causes a portion of our conference to have to go back to phase one. 
So again, we need to remember that, that this will be fluid. And again, we will be adaptive. As we all know, the bounds of our conference lie within three distinct local governments. Each of these governments is assessing the status of the coronavirus in their area. Local churches preparing to gather in person must strictly follow the guidelines and recommendations of their local state and health agencies. We will do our part to update conference materials and resources as they become available. And we need you to do your part to remain vigilant, to remain well-informed with credible information, and to, again, privilege human life above all else. 